are so many terrifying uh, lessons from this show. There's one I want to focus on first. That is um, job environments that are so vulnerable to the exploitation of people, um, but especially women. Because, you know, there's like normal jobs. I mean, well, okay, first lesson from this is literally this industry that, that, that we are getting this terrifying look into um, is actually just a microcosm for all industries. Like, I am sure every single person who watched that documentary um, can relate to several themes, if not all of them. Now, how extreme those things are in your workplace may differ, but the, all of that happens, I would argue, in every industry. But what happens is that, one, is that Hollywood, like some other industries, like, say, Wall Street, tech, you know, the outdoor industry, and especially Hollywood, it, and there's so many more, feel free to add them in the comments, because I know that this is... I'm just thinking the ones off the top of my head. So many industries that are driven by uh, domination culture, um, like like really hierarchical. Uh, the military uh, is another one, but they're mostly men. You know, they're male dominated industries because they're like men's jobs, men's arena, right? Like they, they just barely let women in. And in those industries, um, it is so much easier to get abused because you have no nobody on your side because you're one of the few people in it right and uh and then the same thing happens with any marginalization right when it's mostly like white rich men who are r running the whole show every single person from a marginalized community who breaks in is so vulnerable as we saw in, saw in that documentary you know the way it was like super racist super sexist uh, super like predatory towards children like anyway but one of the reasons why these industries in particular um, and I'm just gonna focus on the outdoors because that's where I worked and the film industry because that's where I work I don't, I'm not gonna speak on other industries I don't know but one of the things one of the interviews again I could make like 10 videos on this <laughs> documentary but the one about you work such long hours together and you're in such weird environments that nobody outside of that world could possibly understand it. So for instance, um, when I worked in the outdoor industry, one of the things that happened to me, what happened in a hotel room when I was sharing a bed with one of my coworkers. Now, if I told anyone else that story who like has a nine to five office job, they're like, what in the world were you doing sharing a bed with your coworkers? Well, there was 14 other people in that hotel and they're all sleeping on the floor in um, sleeping bags. One person was sleeping in the little bathroom on a camping mat in the floor. We all lived in our cars at the time because we weren't getting paid anything. And we all got a hotel room so that we could shower and um, sleep inside one night because it was super windy and it was a dust storm and it was just so stressful. And we all wanted to, to hang out together because we were all over the place. Like it's hard to explain it. But a lot of times we would share hotel rooms and you're used to sharing tents with your coworkers. I'm literally used to sleeping this close to someone I work with who, you know, is of the opposite sex. So it, it's, it's to me sleeping next to my coworker is not weird. And I just assume that, you know, being professional means you don't spoon your coworker, you don't touch your coworker, you don't do any of that stuff. But of course, the lines were crossed a lot of times. People ended up, you know, leading a course together. And if you sleep next to each other every single night, well, sometimes things happen. Now, I never hooked up with any of my coworkers uh, when I was doing like the backpacking and the, the outdoor education stuff. Um, and one of the reasons, because uh, I knew that it would mess with my entire life. Like I knew that I would feel so uncomfortable at work, right? And luckily, um, in most of the situations, I was never even put in an uncomfortable situation. Um, all my coworkers thought I was asexual because they're like, what? Like I worked so many years there and no one ever saw me really date anybody. Right now, there's a whole backstory behind that. But I, this one interview, I just want to point out because this is one of the reasons why this stuff went on on set and why it happens in the outdoor world so much is because when you spend, and I imagine it's the same in, um, or I've heard from my friends who are nurses and stuff like that, where you are working insane hours. You are in close proximity during the most bizarre times. Um, long hours, you just get very comfortable with each other 
because your work life and your social life have this weird, they're, they're blended and you can't separate the two because you spend so much time on set and especially on Dan's set. Sounds like those people never couldn't have a life. You know, that one woman was like written up or whatever out of the two women writers. I think she was fired because she went, um, she hung out with her girlfriends one night after work and went um, on, I don't know, I forget what she did. I'll do a video on it. Um, she had two times that she was social during the season and he fired her. How dare you? You know, because he wanted to control their work life and their life outside of work. So the dude is just like an abuser and I hope he never works again. I hope he honestly goes to jail. Because anyway, oh God, I'm getting worked up. This is one of the interviews. You know, it's funny, I don't even know any of these stars because um, I'm, I'm a Gen X. All of this stuff was on TV, but watching a lot of my millennial friends and see kids that are now adults that they grew up with telling these stories, like this is like so triggering for so many people. So many people feel, uh, are, it seems like people who grew up with these shows um, are losing their childhood because they're so devastated that all of these children and teenagers they were watching were being abused, right? But anyway, um, I think Giovanni is her name. Um, and she says, um, we were there for so many hours. You get comfortable with people. And this is why this industry is so predatory. Because this Mr. Pickles dude, who is so creepy, and I think she even said that, that she would walk on his back. Like all these dudes are asking for massages and stuff, in addition to like grooming them and hmm. So she said, you get so comfortable with people until you're not. And honestly, that was one of the weirdest parts about working in both the film industry and the outdoor adventure industry. I'm literally sleeping next to my coworker, inches away from their face in a tiny tent for 23 days and 23 days straight. And nothing ever happened between me and them. But also I got really good. I'm not saying that um, nothing could have happened to me. It absolutely could have. I lucked out. But I also, one of my... <laughs> um, survival mechanisms is being able to play the I'm like the one of the guys card I'm a bro I'm asexual like hey you know instead of like just like kind of my body language everything gave off this like you don't even know if I'm straight kind of I because I really I wanted male friends and I'd already learned the hard way my first season as a raft guy never hook up with your co-workers um, and never tell them about you know, male coworkers. And being uh, one of the cool girls means that you, they, you, you can't have a Schmeg's life. Because once you do, you're no longer cool. You move into, um, you know, huh, territory. And so I, I felt that the only way I could be safe as a cool girl, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a ad maladaptive trauma response. Because the only way I can even survive, because these are my friends and my coworkers, so I need these men to like me too, because they're my only friends, because they're the only people I have time to hang out with, because I'm working all the time, right? And so the only way for me to be happy in my work life is to not um, ever hook up with any of them and to do whatever I can to be one of them, one of the guys, right? And I learned the very first season as a raft guy, right out of school, that, uh, oops, it literally ruins everything. Uh, like, don't hook up with your coworkers. And so I never did. I had a no hookup policy for all those years I worked in the, in the uh, outdoors after that. Because I was so afraid of it ruining my social life. Because you cannot be the cool girl and someone who is um, schmegually liberated. Uh, and I've told stories about that. They literally, that's another video. I'm still processing what those men did to me when they found out I was hooking up with them. Anyway, so work endless hours with these people and you get very comfortable with each other. They're not only like your coworkers and your friends, they're like your family. Cause you don't actually, you, you get to choose your friends. You don't get to choose your coworkers. So um, they're like friends because they're the only people you hang out with. Cause you don't have time because all you do is work. But they're also your family because just like family, you don't choose who you were born into. And just like family, you, ha they, you still have to be with them and learn how to get along and function in a home or on set. Um, regardless of personalities and conflict and whatever, right? And so if, if there's conflict between two people, the whole family suffers, right? And hence another reason why I didn't hook up is I did not want to be the person that caused the drama that because that, that that's happened before. The terrible feeling knowing everyone is on edge because of a uh, conflict between you and a man, right? The whole point is these predators, they 
They exploit that level of comfort that you have with your coworkers that in any other industry would be straight up weird. So, you know, I've been seeing a lot of reactions on Twitter and on social media in general of people like really not understanding why the parents let this happen, let this happen. I mean, even like Drake or whatever that guy's name is, um, how his mom let him hang out with this clearly predatory man. And that's all, I need to do a whole video on that because people don't seem to understand. I'm angry at the mom too, but people are missing something really important, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video. But like, it's not weird to hang out with these people outside of work. It's not weird to share a hotel room with people that you work with, that you are in insane situations with. You know, like for instance, when I worked on set, when I was um a set dresser on, a big movie. No, actually this one I was, a, I was an assistant prop. Sometimes you have this whole crew and then, you know, there's one like turnaround shot. This is the thing with like, uh, Kira, Kira Knightley and, uh, God, it was a terrible movie. Honestly, I don't even think it made it to the theaters, but it was like, it was big stars, right? So this was like a big crew, very like mostly union, right? And there's this one, like the director wanted this like turnaround shot, right? Like, and so basically we all had to be on set, but we all had to hide under couches. So I'm hiding with like four people behind the couch, right? Um, with, you know, the hair and makeup and all the other people in the art department. We're all like this. In what job are you like that? You know what I mean? Like you are so, you hang out on, on, on cube trucks. You hang out in all these environments and in the wilderness too. You hang out in parking lots and tents. You are so close physically to these people and emotionally, and, and then you go through so much together in these real, and this is why I think that the hospital, you know, like healthcare people can relate to this. You go through so much together that it binds you. You have this shared common experience of going through the best and the worst times together. And so you feel this level of intimate intimacy, or sorry, instant intimacy with your coworkers because you have this shared experience of dealing with very hard things. And then also the shared experience of collective joy of, you know, defeating that hard problem together. And so there's just like, people don't understand in those worlds, unless you've worked in a world in an industry like that, how on earth coworkers could be doing this stuff together and how you could easily fall into the hands of somebody who is preying on you, uh, I mean, especially if you're a child and the, you know, or teenager and they're an adult, why their parents trust them. It's an industry if you don't, understand it I get it but it's hard to explain because seriously I, I I stopped telling stories about being in the wilderness because anytime I'd be like well yeah like people it made it sound like I had really bad judgment by sleeping next to and sharing a bed with a co-worker when it was common you know in a hotel room with a queen bed three of us and we just knew the rules do you know what I mean but there's always one there's always one or two predators who exploit that level of comfort that you have with your coworkers. And that's exactly what happened to me in a hotel room once where one of the dudes, after everyone was asleep, walked off right next to me, right next to me. I gotta tell that story one day cause it's, anyway, but everyone was asleep. Everyone was asleep. And I'm really proud of myself that like, after I got out of that situation, I called that company. I was like, I need you to know that this is what this man did to me. He should not be working with clients. You should not leave him in charge of anybody. He's not even safe with his own coworkers. I'm so glad that I did that. Cause I, you know, especially as a survivor of like uh -huh, from childhood essay and stuff, it's my, my, my um, default is to explain it away. Well, oh, maybe I encouraged him to do that somehow. Maybe it's my fault somehow, right? It's always my fault that, that these men did this, right? And I, at that point in time, and I, also because I told Liz about it and she was like, you gotta tell him. And I was like, okay, that's what I thought. Um, but one of the reasons why these men get away with this is because they seem to understand, especially uh, who is the most vulnerable. Uh, who, and, and they use that comfort to access, that ease of that comfort, that familiar feeling, that family feeling to target whichever kid who either A, has already been a, a victim of childhood essay or whatever, or whose parents are divorced, or who has like an alcoholic or narcissist parent, somebody who does not have a support system at home that they're going to tell, they find those kids. It's like we have a bullseye on our head. They can tell. And they test us out by how good we are with boundaries. 
And most kids are just already trust too much as it is because that's what's amazing about children. They just trust. They don't know how ter terrible the world is yet. Uh, and that's one reason why we love children because they haven't, uh, their innocence hasn't been taken away yet. But kids who are in homes where they don't have uh, parents and family members who literally teach them, you know, what's normal and what's not. And if you're used to a parent or a family member crossing your boundaries and literally assaulting you, then you're not like, it's not going to be weird for that to happen on set. And so A, the world itself, any industry that is like that, where you spend an enormous amount of time together, you work on insane stuff. You, it's like play, work hard, play. That's why the military, among other reasons, is full of grapists. You could not pay me to be a woman in the military. I would never feel safe. Never. Because the familiarity of literally going to combat together. You think that those guys are going to throw under the bus all those, uh, all that their relationship with those guys? Because one of them, you know, just grape you. Like, get over it. You know, like these boys clubs, and especially in industries that are dominated by men, are rife with predators. And they are, they are able to just run free, consequence, without consequences for sometimes decades, like we've seen on this. And I just want people to have this, this angle, this understanding when you're just like, what? Like, I can't believe they go to Disney World with a, what parent would let the da 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 da? You just need to understand. It is literally like those, a lot of parents who didn't understand how many predators there are and didn't understand and also were like, you know, like they didn't want to ruin it for their kids. Like you don't want to be like one of those parents. And so like I, one of the things in the, in the documentary that's so interesting is a lot of parents were very uncomfortable with things but they're like, don't know how to negotiate this thing because they want to protect their kid. But they know if they speak up too much, especially on a set run by Dan, I hate that guy. Um, they can't speak up. If you cause any trouble, you will be blacklisted. All those parents and children were terrified and crew members and writers were terrified of being blacklisted because that's what happens when you let people like Dan, a man who hates himself, run the show. And like they said in, in one part of it, it's a top down. If the man at the top is abusive, insecure, hates himself man, who's got something to prove, everyone below him is going to be abused. And that's exactly what happened. Some more than others. But everybody was scared of that dude. You know? And just like with like Trump and all these other like high profile like narcissist dudes, you know, you got to kiss the ring and you're his friend until you're not. You're safe until you're not. You don't want to be his enemy. So you got all these yes men and these sets are run the same way. If the dude at the top is terrifying and creates an environment of terror. And then on, in addition to that, you have a whole set with people who are working insane hours together and are very close and familiar. That's how you're going to have these predators. And the fact that it was a PA. Y'all understand what PAs are? I could not believe a PA was one of the... Uh, Predators. PAs are the least respected, least powerful people on that set. They are the ones who are getting screwed over all the time. I was a PA for a while. They're literally like the scum of the earth in the eyes of everyone on set. Just like in the military or any other very hierarchical, toxically masculine environment, the people on the bottom get it the worst. How does a PA get away with that? If a PA is doing that, you, I, 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 I can't imagine how many other predators were on that set if a PA was doing it. Like a lot of ki like a lot of PAs, a lot of PAs just watch a door. And they just, like, they get like the weirdest job. Sometimes it is the most boring thing you could ever do. And they're like, do this for eight hours. And you're like, okay. Or, and sometimes PAs, their job is to literally like make sure that like, like a meth addict doesn't walk by you. Like, I, it's such a dangerous job a lot of times, to be honest, what they ask you to do. And you can't talk back, can't say no. And so this, this PA, this least powerful person on set, his job is just to walk the kids around. That's it. It's not like he was a director, a writer, had any power. And he was abusing these kids? You understand? If the least powerful man on set can get away with that. What did Dan do? And I, I guarantee you, there's a lot of people who have not talking because even though Dan has been out, there all those people in that industry, they do not want to be blacklisted. 
every, you, you know, you lose your job forever if you tell on these dudes. This one was studying the Bible and he was even working for free. Like, this man who wasn't even getting paid to be there for half of the week. Look at that. A volunteer had access to these kids and was able to abuse them. Now, it's a lot easier to rat out a PA than Dan. I bet you, I, I bet there's a lot of stories about Dan that people are still too afraid to talk about. It's one thing when you, I mean, look what happened. Look at all the Hollywood stars that went against that Drake guy. Um, when he took him to court. All those people, James Madsen, like all these stars, like the, the mom from Growing Pains, supporting, all of them supporting the pan out, and all he was was like a language coach. He wasn't even like that big of a deal. He was just a like whatever, I don't forget his exact title, but it's not like he was director, producer, executive producer, writer, like star. He's just like some crew man who had always had pickles. Like, I can't believe they got away with those jokes, those phallic jokes for years. I haven't, I mean, I can, I can believe it, honestly, but still. But this PA is writing stuff like this. I love you. And then what happens? They go in and they, you know, someone rats them out and they find 10,000 images of children and then a bunch of bags with the kids' names on them and little, like, is this man a serial on a live or Like, that is like straight up CSI Las Vegas stuff. CSI anything. Or Criminal Minds. Well, I had to stop watching that show when the marionette episode, like, I, uh, but like, that is like, what? This dude, this young dude on set was doing all that. What are the executives doing? What's Dan doing? Cause he's the one writing all these crazy jokes for, the potato and you know what's really frustrating about all this is that I would not be willing I'd be willing to bet so much money that I don't have that there are like that most children in Hollywood come out with SA I don't know how you can get out of that industry without it because it's hard enough as a woman to come out of that industry without being humiliated in the writing rooms, like harassed, uh, groped, uh, or worse, you know, casting couch stuff. But I would, you know, again, like I, I always think something must have happened to Leo. He was working with that Mr. Mr. Pickles dude, and that's probably why he won't date anyone under 25. He's probably got a lot of issues, right? And now he's creepy. But what, you know, drives me crazy is like, as a survivor of childhood SA, and interest, we have a big problem with that in church, in families, all over the country, all over the world. But in the U.S., it's very, 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 I'm going to speak just on the U.S. because that's my country. And I'm going to cover an article that just came out in the Atlantic that is horrifying. People are realizing on 23andMe just how big of a problem this is. But what is so frustrating is when this QAnon people... And all these like right wing, what right wing people, the like the pipeline to the alt right, and all of them are obsessed with you know this that uh, Hollywood. Well, it is full of it, but but then how you like, but knowing that it's full of that, but don't want to like buy like don't want to like feed into the the the, the alt right and like fascism, like. And it's usually the people who are doing it, who are accusing everyone, uh, you know, all these church people. It's like, well, maybe you should look in your church before you look to Hollywood, <laughs> right? Uh, because that's where some of the incidents with me happened. Church, right? One of the most unsafe places for children and women is church. But it makes sense because, you know, God, like, impre like in impregnated, uh, like, like Jesus is like a product of like a non-consensual, <laughs> Yeah, like, anyway. But I'm just, it's so frustrating because I, like when these stories come out, all the people like the fascists are like, see? And it's like, bro, we didn't ever tell you this wasn't happening. Anyway, the, uh, like, <laughs> I'm, it is so much worse than what we're seeing. We're only seeing the, the low tier guys. And Dan only because there's just too much evidence and all these people had to finally speak out. But how long did that guy reign in power? Like, uh, uh, 
over a decade, maybe two decades, right? Even the fact that the Nickelodeon uh, symbol is a foot, uh, like what? Anyway, I have so much to say in this documentary, but I just wanted to explain the work environment itself and why places like that, where you work crazy hours under so much stress, under, under sit- circumstances that most people would not be able to handle, life and, threat, life and death situations, stuff like that, that is full of predators. The environment itself, it's literally laying the groundwork for you to feel like all these people that you, are, you're forced to fit, hang out with because you're coworkers and they're your bestie and they're like family, perfect. When one of them is abusing one, nobody wants to turn on them. No one believes them the same way no one wants to believe dad or granddaddy graped grandma and all the kids. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like the, it's like the set is like a family and people bring to work, any work, any job, all their unresolved trauma from their families and that's why when these people when these men especially become bosses they're a nightmare they literally recreate the trauma of their daddy on the whole set or whatever their mom their dad their whoever oh god okay i have so much to say on this let me know if you, if you want more and if there's anything you want me to particularly address because good god i could literally make 10 videos on this thing i'm still processing it to be honest because it's it's a lot for any survivors out there who are watching this m- film this documentary I hope you're taking care of yourself because it's very triggering, very triggering.